For the first few months after Anthem's release, it was completely attacked by critics, earning a Metacritic score of 55. But when you compare it to its E3 trailer, it made no sense how it failed. A new looter shooter with an open world, storyline, flying mechanics, and fun engaging combat. My name is Charles, and today we'll be seeing what went wrong during the development of Anthem and what it maybe could have been. Anthem's development first started in 2012 and was teased in the same year. Bioware's general manager Casey Hudson, who produced the original Mass Effect trilogy, supervised the project. Internally, the developers gave the project the name Dylan, referencing Bob Dylan with hopes that the game would be spoke about years later, just as Dylan was. However, the official name until 2017 was beyond. The team was working hard on the game and taking it as a serious project, and yet the game was entirely off track. The main problem was EA's direction in the entire project. The Frostbite engine had been draining the life out of the developers in the game, and the team was understaffed, provoking rush in the final months before its release. However, there were problems with Bioware too. They had next to nothing in ideas for the start of the game's development cycle, except for that the game would be action-based and preferably co-op. One of the earliest ideas was the use of robotic-enhanced exosuits, similar to Iron Man's, to allow for survival of a map of different dangers and creatures which ended up being the main part of the game at the end. At first, it wasn't even a looter shooter, and just a mission-driven game. The earliest missions were more like live-action events in Destiny. Players would fight through different sites to gain resources for their suits. However, developers were worried this would even work in the Frostbite engine, but the team had something coming that no one expected. In August 2014, Casey Hudson left Bioware. He felt that the team was in a good enough position that they didn't need his oversight anymore. Many people were concerned as they felt Hudson kept the team together on past games, and their concerns were right. After Hudson left, the team was struggling with scaling of the game which impacted other areas within development. In 2015, David Gator, the writer for Dragon Age, was assigned to the Anthem team to help with story development. However, Gator mostly drew the story back towards Mass Effect and Dragon Age, the exact opposite that the team was going for. His changes put pressure on the game artists and level designers to rearrange their parts of development. Almost a year after he arrived, Gator left Bioware just as Hudson did, and the team looped back to their original vision, but problems were still arising. Even after several story and major development changes, the Frostbite engine still was challenging the team, and yet EA wouldn't let the team change engines, due to the goal to have all of EA studios using the same technology and software. The Frostbite engine terribly suited the needs and visions for Anthem. For a while, Anthem almost had crafting mechanics and more in-depth survival aspects, but the team just couldn't transition the systems from their past games. Even after that, some aspects that were in the final release almost weren't, such as the flying mechanic, probably the most major mechanic which was added then released constantly. To add even more holes for the devs to plug, some of the Bioware members best suited for dealing with the Frostbite engine were moved to support the FIFA series in 2016, after its transition to the new engine, leaving fewer members to help with the engine, and fewer members all in all. At this point, Anthem was over four years into development, and developers expressed worriedly that Anthem was way off track from its intended schedule. At this point, they should have been close to the final production stages, but they weren't, and were still facing poor management. Though they tried to avoid it, Anthem's loot and shoot style was dragging closer and closer to Bungie's Destiny series. And even worse, the team at EA that watched the first cut of the Anthem demo immediately contacted Frostbite's developers and EA heads, stating that they needed to change the current representation of the demo. In 2017, prior to E3, Patrick Soderlund watched the new demo and was very impressed, especially with the flying. Weeks before E3, the team at EA notified Bioware that Beyond, the original name, would just be too difficult to trademark, so instead they used one of the backup names, Anthem. During this time, Mass Effect Andromeda was also in the process of shipping, but the Austin office shifted from that to help with Anthem's development. But another problem arose yet again. Andromeda was not successful, which just put even more pressure on the team working on Anthem. Mid-2017, the problems just started to pool again. Several Bioware staff members left the studio, and one of the lead gameplay designers, Corey Gasper, suddenly died. 
As late as August 2017, the game was still behind schedule. Even over a year away, Bioware knew that they would miss their intended 2018 quarter 4 release date. EA refused to have the game be delayed as late as March 2019. Around October 2017, Casey Hudson returned to Bioware and was moved to the project lead and to the new studio head. Team members from the 4th Dragon Age were moved to Anthem's team to ensure that EA would get their intended release date. In a nutshell, the majority of Anthem was developed the year before release due to new leadership and pressure from EA. All the rapid changes caused the team to dismiss game balance and narrative cohesion, just more stress for the Bioware staff. And across 2017 and 2018, even more people left the studio. Upon release, players were presented a dry but interesting story. The player is set on an unnamed planet controlled by spirits called the Anthem of Creation. Most cities are protected by sentinels, javelin pilots who are the security for most colonized areas. Cities rely on javelin freelancers to deal with problems outside of the cities, who use ciphers, a partner who is attuned to the Anthem and has psychic gifts to assist on missions. The player's cipher is named Owen, a person who desires to be a freelancer but cannot due to his attunement. In the beginning, the player enters a storm called a Heart of Rage to deactivate an anomaly. However, the mission goes incredibly wrong and people lose faith in the freelancers, whose ranks are decimated. The player moves to a city called Fort Tarsus and still works as an active freelancer. The player must locate a spy who went missing while undercover in a smuggling gang. At a devastated gang hideout, they encounter a Dominion leader, an enemy, called the Monitor. The Monitor kills the spy and takes a shape of relic that was hidden. The player must reach the Cenotaph, the anomaly in the Heart of Rage, before the Dominion uses relics to. Halleck and Faye, two main characters who attacked the Heart of Rage in the beginning, have been planning another attack on the Cenotaph. I won't go any further in the story in case someone wants to play it, but if you just want another story, you can easily look it up. The soundtrack was written by Sarah Schachner, the composer for Assassin's Creed Unity. Bioware made the announcement in late August 2018. Schachner was compelled to fuse fantasy and sci-fi to represent Anthem's setting and story, similar to what Marty O'Donnell had done with Halo. Bioware had suggested something between Avengers and Middle-earth. Sarah said she was free to explore, but just needed to follow those and a few other guidelines. In songs such as Valor, Schachner featured her own vocalizations and then processed them through a vocoder and a MIDI controller. This was one of the stronger areas of Anthem, with Sarah having worked incredibly hard to make a great soundtrack. On February 22nd, 2019, Anthem was released. In the months following, it was attacked by critics and gamers, and to this day it has a 59 on Metacritic, but the score went as low as 55, the lowest score for Bioware since the company was founded. Bioware fans were not happy, having received two game flops in a row, but hardcore fans still held out hope that the game would eventually be fixed, mostly due to Bungie's Destiny trilogy also having a rocky start. But their hope wouldn't last long. In the following months, it would become aware how little time Bioware had to polish the game. To the fans, it felt half-baked, untested, and there wasn't enough tweaking. And to add to dislike, there were still the common release bugs and it was thin on content. In the weeks after launch, there appeared to be a new, different major problem every day. Several fans and critics have speculated indefinitely what went wrong with Anthem. How did a game that looked so great at E3 look the exact opposite at release? The most common assumption is that EA pressured Bioware to make a Destiny clone, due to the trilogy's success at the time, but none of these were the answer. Anthem failed because of poor management and organization. Studio heads and project leads were passed around like chess pieces, and EA's need for Anthem to run on the Frostbite engine was a roadblock for the developers. Branches were understaffed, and pressure from the flop on Andromeda stressed the studio. Nobody could have organized this. Challenges arose everywhere, every day. However, I myself truly believe that if little to none of these problems occurred, the game could have possibly been more successful than the Destiny trilogy. The world itself is amazing, with beautiful underwater caves, waterfalls, hills and mountains, and secret tunnels to explore. The dev's most successful part of the game was probably the map, but even if you have a good map, you still need to have good mechanics. Anthem was a broken success. 
Anthem was eventually abandoned by both the developers and the fans. It's truly sad to see a game that could have revolutionized the RPG and loot and shoot design fail, when it could have so easily succeeded. Thank you so much for watching, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more short game stories like this.